you eat out, you eat foods that are made by someone else. You trust them to make it safe for you to eat. As a food worker, you prepare food for other people, and they trust you to do all that you can to keep them from getting sick. One of the most important tools in the kitchen is your thermometer. Being sure it measures accurately and using it often ensures foods are maintained at the proper temperature to prevent growth of germs that can make people sick. You get what you measure. To be sure your thermometer is measuring accurately, you first need to properly adjust or calibrate it to be sure it reads correctly. You should calibrate your thermometer regularly before each shift, whenever it is dropped or bumped, or goes from one temperature extreme to another. One of the easiest ways to calibrate your thermometer is with ice water. Water with lots of ice measures 32 degrees Fahrenheit. We know that. Using this known temperature and making your thermometer match is the way you calibrate your thermometer. Calibrate your thermometer using ice water. Fill a large container with crushed ice. Add tap water until the container is full and then stir the mixture well and to be sure to use lots of ice. Next, put the thermometer stem or probe into the water. Make sure you put the stem into the water far enough to cover the sensing area. Don't let the thermometer touch the container. Last, adjust the thermometer so it reads 32 degrees Fahrenheit to match the ice water temperature. For biometallic stem thermometers, use a wrench or the case to rotate the thermometer head until it reads 32 degrees Fahrenheit. For electronic thermometers, follow the manufacturer's directions on some devices. You can press the reset button to match the ice water temperature of 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Once you've calibrated your thermometer accurately, you have a useful tool to prevent customers from becoming sick. Use your thermometer regularly to be sure food stay out of the danger zone. Bacteria or other germs need time, food, and moisture to grow, but they won't grow when the temperature of the food is colder than 41 degrees or hotter than 135 degrees Fahrenheit. The temperatures between 41 degrees and 135 degrees Fahrenheit are in the danger zone. Keep potentially hazardous foods out of the danger zone. For example, when food is left in the danger zone, bacteria can grow fast and make your customers sick. Using a calibrated thermometer frequently is the only way to be sure you are monitoring food temperatures to keep them out of the danger zone and avoid making someone sick. Your thermometer is a useful tool, and like all tools, it must be used and taken care of. Clean and sanitize your thermometer regularly to prevent cross-contamination. You'll need to keep the case clean and sanitized as well as sanitizing between readings and raw or undercooked foods. When checking the temperature of food, insert the probe into the thickest part of the food, usually in the center. Check foods in several spots since temperatures may vary in different areas. Before recording a temperature, wait for the thermometer reading to steady, usually 15 seconds after inserting the thermometer into the food. Since you only get what you measure, you need to use the thermometer often to keep foods out of the danger zone and prevent foodborne illness. Use a metal stem or digital thermometer to check temperatures while cooking food to make sure that it gets done at the thickest part. Different foods have to be cooked to different final cook temperatures to be safe. All foods must be cooked for a minimum of 15 seconds at the required temperature. A metal stem thermometer measures the inside or internal temperature of the food. The only way you can be sure that the food is cooked enough is to use a metal stem thermometer placed in the center of the food. You can't rely on the oven temperature. Here are a few examples of potentially hazardous foods and how hot they must be to be safe. They can be hotter, but they must be at least this hot to kill germs. Poultry and stuffing, 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Pork, 145 degrees Fahrenheit. Beef, lamb, and seafood, 145 degrees Fahrenheit. Place the thermometer in the thickest part of the meat or in the center of the food to get a true reading. Do not touch a bone with the stem of the thermometer. Never cook large roast turkeys or stuffed turkeys while they are still frozen. Their big side keeps the insides from cooking to a safe temperature. You must thaw them first so the heat can reach the center of the meat faster. Once you know your thermometer is accurate and know the safe final cook temperature of foods, you have what you need to actively monitor temperatures to avoid serving raw or undercooked foods which could make your customers sick. After the food is cooked and ready to serve, keep it warm enough to stop any germs from growing. Use hot holding equipment to make sure the food stays at least 135 degrees Fahrenheit at all times. Stir all liquid foods like soups and gravies so they don't get cold on top. Covers on the pans will help to keep the heat in and food warm enough. Do not try to heat cold foods in these warmers. 
hot hold foods above 135 degrees. Sometimes you may prepare too much food and may wish to save it for another meal. Cooling foods is a risky business. The best way to have safe food is to make it fresh each day, just before you serve it. If you have food that is left over or made in advance, you must cool it and store it safely. The first rule to remember about cooling, cool hot foods as fast as you can to 41 degrees or below past the danger zone. Food that is not cooled fast enough is one of the leading causes of foodborne illnesses. Here are a few steps to cool foods safely. As a food worker, you'll have to determine what will work best for your operation. Remember to cool foods quickly. Before you put away any food, you must place it in the shallow metal pans with the food no more than two inches deep. Cut large roast and turkeys into pieces no larger than four inches. Put all meats and other hot food in the cooler or refrigerator as quickly as you can. Right away, do not let the food sit at room temperature for more than 30 minutes. For liquid foods, use chilling wands and ice baths. You may be able to add ice to soups or cooked pasta to speed their cooling. You'll have to stir liquids often to get rid of the heat in the center. Do not stack pans. Leave space for air to move around them. Foods may be uncovered during the cooling process. However, be sure to protect them from contamination. Cool quickly from 135 degrees to 70 within two hours, from 70 degrees to 41 within four more hours. Total cooling time cannot be longer than six hours. Measure your cooling progress with a calibrated thermometer until it is below 41 degrees Fahrenheit. Keep a written record or log of the temperatures you measure. Once cooled to 41 degrees Fahrenheit, cover the food to keep it protected. Each refrigeration unit, cold table, or cooler must have its own thermometer that gives a true measure of how cold the air is. But you must also check the foods with a metal stem thermometer. Remember, you get what you measure. Food that is cooked and then cooled may need to be heated again. When you must reheat foods, do it very quickly, within two hours to 165 degrees Fahrenheit. The right way to do this is on the stove burners or in a microwave oven, convention ovens, or double boilers. Do not use anything that will heat the food slowly because it takes too long to pass the danger zone. Stir the food to be sure that all parts of it are hot. Then use your metal stem thermometer to check the temperature. Reheat foods to 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Finally. Remember to prevent germs from growing in foods and causing someone to become sick. Use a calibrated thermometer frequently. You must keep foods out of the danger zone. You get what you measure.